Alright, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Make Calcutta Relevant Again, the podcast. And today, we are three hosts, as yeah. it turns out. That's cool. It's cool? Yeah. yeah. Is that cool? Yeah. Never been done yeah. before. Never been yeah. done before. Exactly. Three hosts, no guests. Maybe yeah. you're the guests. The people who are watching. That's Can Spider-Man yeah. meme. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, basically that. Wait, you yeah. have to do that. Okay, we yeah, all do it. Yeah, yeah. All right. I can't believe it's I was the one who no, had to no, do no, that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. The kaku Didn't click in immediately. Me, the kaku in me is very deep yeah. down. Yeah. Actually, Gen Z. Deep down, I'm. Do yeah. you agree with that? I think we are all. I think I will fit myself in your generation, and I will. What say, do you mean your generation? All, all You're already in my generation. Yeah. So it's Spider Man across the generations. You know. Oh, that was the whole point, right? Yeah. Yeah, but Tobey Maguire wins. There is no competition. It's. No, Tobey Maguire good. wins. Like Tom Most. Holland just is not it. What do you yeah. mean wins? Like because Tobey Maguire was actually like he gave he he was a great Spider-Man. Yeah. What good casting? I yeah, feel. I agree. Yeah. 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 But yeah. wait, I have to introduce the the hosts, the co-hosts. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Now that you're host, why don't you introduce yourselves? Let's exactly. just take the mic. Take the mic. Yeah. Please Start don't raise the mic don't with your hand. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not allowed to touch it. I was told not to, yeah. to touch the mic, but. I'm Rahul. Uh, I've been working with 145 for the 145 East for the past year now. Uh, it's a company that started with my mother and brother. I've been doing content and marketing for a while, and somehow I landed up here. I don't know how, but let's because your mother and brother were not available. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm like the third. I'm like the third substitute, guys. Man, that's like. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, What's so going on over here, man? Yeah. Like your I third walked into choice. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you really I'm the, laid I'm the, the trap. For oh, that. Rahul, I'm the super sub. Right. You know, right. I'm the super sub. Yeah. Come in and score the ra- last minute goal. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's well happened. done, though. You yeah. know, like I'm sure your parents would finally be proud. Like, yeah, yeah, finally. Finally, like, you know, after like, Mama, I made it to the made podcast. it to like make Calcula relevant again. You yeah. Know? yeah, with nice. You want to look to the camera, right? Say hi, mom, to the camera. Hello, mom. I made it. Shomanti, look in that. Yeah, your son wants to say something. Yeah. I made it with Meghdoot Kaku and Pragya. <laughs> Kaki. Kaki. Ma. The KK club. <laughs> the KK club. The KK club. <laughs> in, in French, KK actually means really cheesy and not in a nice way. Oh. I think when you say somebody's KK, it means they're like... Like a fromage oh, means cheesy. Oh, okay, yeah. It sounds like cheese. fromage just means cheese. cheese. Yeah, yeah, fromage. Yeah. KK is just like weird, like cringe. Mm. It's KK. So KK is sounds that's like definitely, a better, yeah. <laughs> I think we're a little bit, little bit KK. cringe. Yeah. Do you want to maybe finish your introduction so people are yes, just know who I you am are? Pragya. I, I met these two on the road today and then they mm-hmm. said like, let's come and let's do a podcast together. It'll be fun. And I said, yeah, of course. I'll grace, I'll grace this table. I grace this table and speak <laughs> really close to the mic. We, sa- so, we so actually honored. said that you don't have to get into it. You are actually the biggest hey, man, boomer. I picked you up from under my flyover. <laughs> like, why are you, why, why is this, this is my thank you. <laughs> this is literally my yeah. podcast. Like, yeah. you, know, you can't lay this on me. You can tell him. Yeah, I picked you up from No, no, so I work as a... Um, I work as a CMO consultant with uh, companies and I'm here in Calcutta for a project and I have my own thoughts about um, Calcutta and very strong opinions about I think everything that we will be discussing today. So Ooh. happy to add that. Nice to meet you. To the table. <laughs> nice yeah. to meet you. Yeah. Whatever random person nice who to, thinks nice this Nice to meet you in real life. Yeah. <laughs> I love. Yeah. Pragya, Pragya. Pragya. Pragya, Pragya, right. Sorry yeah. that we had. We, thanks. Now that we have established who everyone across the table is, I guess yeah. we can quickly uh, talk about some stuff as well. I mean, it doesn't yeah. have to be very quickly. Mm-hmm. It can take a little bit of time. Uh, but first about, I think the first bit about that I would like to touch upon today is misconceptions. Mm-hmm. First misconception being that uh, people think that I started 145 East. Oh, <laughs> Lord. Mm. Yeah. I do really like the brand and I do think of this as my brand and I've, uh, I think I've worn my 145 East to more shows and, uh, and conferences mm-hmm. and made contributed directly to a lot of purchases Absolutely, but these yeah. people won't share any equity with me I don't know. <laughs> I've been trying to I've been trying to become there's so many people who try to make me investors in their companies and this is a company that I want to actively become an investor in so I thought today might as well you might know, be a put me on the spot and be like hey sign the contract yeah, so here's yes. basically the whole point of getting him on the show is that you know, uh, after this, the, the, in order for this episode to go out, you have to sign, sign the exactly. sign out, sign yeah. out I think, the company. I think that's why they sent the third substitute so that I can't do anything. You, <laughs> you know, can't. He's, like, he's not even a director. He <laughs> doesn't <laughs> even know. He's like, don't you? Yeah. Oh, no, okay, signature. you know what? You know what? I'll, I'll sign it. Yeah. 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 Why so not? So your hints were very obvious. Huh? There's been a conversation at home. Yeah. No, but 
yeah. Let's let's send Rishabh. Let's not send the real yeah. people who have yeah. actual power. Yeah. yeah. Which is actually just your mom, basically. Yeah. <laughs> right. Not yeah. even your older brother. Not like he. Yeah, mm. man. I mean, you know, yeah. the the power trickles down from <laughs> the matriarchy. It's a matriarch. Yes. And, uh, Woo. Woo. You just won a few fan fem girls. Oh, let's go, man. Yeah. Instead yeah. of the fem boys. He's, he's yeah. now he's flexing yeah. his like oh, right. Like, he's sorry, like, guys. Uh, a little bit. Yeah. Just being like. So yeah, it's run by. It's a woman based. It's a woman based. Based brand and yeah. like you know we have like 90 percent of our employees who are women in yeah. our company. The only males are basically my brother and me. Yeah. <laughs> so and actually, that's actually that's true. That's actually that's true. true. That's that actually. I actually. Oh wow. Yeah. 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 That's so amazing. Yeah. Rishabh and I like are the only dudes. Only so unpaid. The environment unpaid is going to be. Yeah. 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 The no, the company. environment will teach you a lot. <laughs> yeah. The man knows. I know everything knows. about this company. He knows this everything. is actually my company. We were yeah. 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 Anyway, that's but that's so nice to hear, right? Yeah. When I mean, someone close relationship. Much, so make, much investment. Like, make those, so make those share like company. this deep relationship with us for the longest time, and you know, I think this goes beyond like just the company itself. I think it's like almost spiritual in a way. You know, yeah. what I mean, like, why did this happen? No one knows, but like, yeah. there's this connection that exists, and yeah. you know, super grateful for it. Yeah. Um, you know to have someone who's just supported and loved the work for so long exactly. that that means so much for someone who's uh just making and creating and trying to uh do good work in in some way positively like you know the i think the relationship also came from our love for for calcutta i think yeah. i think that's and the that, that was the like core you, commonality the fact that he also didn't give up so many people start and work and you know the way that we've seen 145 east peak at this point which i mm-hmm. that showed its peak period i think for you guys and the way that you know you've grown such a new audience such yeah, a different yeah. audience like very actively who's not just interested in clothes like clothes now it's a byproduct of the brand remember how we were talking about what does it take to run a brand yeah. like it takes understanding the platform and they've understood instagram so well like, <laughs> like they've nobody's understood business they've understood scripting they've used what content and they had unfortunately now instagram is no longer still photos it's very video 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 yeah so it's such a good like you guys have really killed it on social media it's well, it's appreciate great. it you know i yeah. mean i think it came from uh, just having fun you know uh, it it started with a lot of experimentation mm-hmm. we were rishab and i both used to make a lot of like cinematic fashion reels and we were like we're never going to turn the camera because we love film and we love cinema but you know i would say that we got everything we got by just reel. flipping the camera vertically yeah. and then writing scripts and having fun with it you know there was no real restriction as such we're just like oh you know what <laughs> there's a joke that makes me laugh let me like turn it into a script really quickly Mm-hmm. and so there was no resistance you know because founder creator it's in like one bubble right now you know yeah. so the language and you know there's no color scheme as such there no like boundaries it was like limitless so it became like our little Unhinged playground cringe place it's more than towel it's it's art you know the the weavers are artists second it's like it has this connotation to it where you know you have rickshaw walas wearing it as lungis you have taxi drivers you know wiping their sweat with it so there's some people who look at it with like some disdain almost yeah. they will never like, put it on them you know as like a piece of clothing and you were talking about what's fashion fashion is expression what do you mm. stand for yeah. you know so if you want to stand for gamcha gamcha is like what it's the underdog of fabrics mm-hmm. what what's what's bengal bengal is the underdog, underdog. in ca- in in india so let's let's take it man let's that's why it. they sent him That's yeah, the that's one right. with all the He's stories. The, the, <laughs> the wordsmith. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. Third sub. Um, yeah, third, third sub. sub. <laughs> yeah. So the wordsmith with the with the bulging triceps. Hey, know? this yeah. happened. Just yeah. you told me to sit this yeah. side. Yeah. It was Look, just my better. Look, that's a major underdog. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it, yeah. for yeah. sure. It's one of those things that if given the right, I think fuel, it would kind of emerge stronger than. Absolutely, we have it. We have the energy. In ten years, if we have a speedy, a speedy backing to it. I yeah. think it's possible. So from one story of 145 East to 145 mm, in Calcutta. Yeah. Which is Pragya she runs yeah. this brand. Although it's not a Calcutta brand but It's a Bombay brand. It's so, a Bombay brand. Yes. Yeah, so even coming on board which was so I'm not yet ha- launching by the time probably this shoots out my uh, work would have been relaunched and because in December I decided to restructure work. This is my fir- my first why I'm in Calcutta is because I'm working with 145. Fun part is that this time around I've decided Hey man, there's one way to earn money, which is retainer mm. through um, through your project, which is your retainer fee model per month per month. This, however, is based entirely on revenue, on achieving certain revenue targets. Mm-hmm. So this is the first time where you're like you come in and this is 
a new industry, a new space I'm heading into because it was social media before, where what which was my domain, and uh, now it's like okay, in the next ninety days, I have to increase the revenue up to X sum, and, and then you make entire, a percentage. And of that's time. my yeah, and that's the <coughs> and I'm seeing such a shift now. And sorry to make it about marketing for like a minute. This no, like but let's make industry. it about marketing yeah. for ten minutes. It's yeah. yeah. part of everything. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, it's yeah. it's omnipresent. It's in everything you do. It's quantum. <laughs> it's basically marketing. It just exists, you know. Is that what you guys are talking my, about? No, no, sorry, right. It's just like that. Ah, <laughs> no. ah, your Instagram. Yeah. Where are you? Not. Are you a quantum physicist? No, no, no. I'm no, not. No. I was a, a poser. I was a pretentious 14-year-old. You ah, know, okay, when I yeah. made my so Instagram. So poser. So I was. Yeah, right. yeah, totally. Like, you could look, change username. There's an option to change username. Like at twenty, I own who I was. You know, I keep it going. Good. Well done. You know, that's what. That's about. That's about it. Yeah. So. So to, yeah, going yeah. back to marketing. Yeah. So you're a chief marketing officer yeah. as a service. That's yes. what you are doing. CMO now. as a service. You yeah. do CMO as a service. Yeah. Yeah. And exactly. it's a very new industry, almost. I think in it's Bengal. It's a new problem. Least. Modern problem require modern solutions. <laughs> nah. There's a uh, camera. Uh, that meme. Yeah. It's. I don't even know. If, did you get the meme reference? No, no. Okay, from the your moves. generation. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So uh, modern basically, modern problems require modern now solutions. Now it's oh, yeah, no yeah, yeah. longer oh, about right. like how you have everyone in house, right? Um, my advice to clients mostly is to gen- at least get your core marketing team in house, just your core members, and mm-hmm. outsource agencies for technicals such as performance ads, right? Website areas which have technical and digital marketing, where you can't actually learn the skills or you don't have the time to learn the skills. The rest of the resources you need in house, and mm-hmm. what I think right now is not because there's so many agencies popping up every day. It's like there was a time in 2014 where boutiques were popping up like crazy. You know, fashion boutiques were popping up. Like everyone was a fashion designer. It's the same thing is happening now. Everyone is a social media marketer or this marketer. Mm-hmm. Or it's just social media. The demand is less. The supply is too much, and what mm-hmm. that does is drives the price down. Mm-hmm. And more than just facilitating a social media agent, the new age person, the new age founder. Let's say Meg Doot, right? Meg Doot has 10,000 things he has to do. Um, he has a right hand man. Probably CEO, COO would be. You know, Shilas. The, he is fortunate enough where as a startup founder, he has understood that there are different systems or different pre- people have to deploy for him to not have to worry about it on the day-to-day basis. Mm-hmm. That I am that, but there are many founders who find themselves basically being full-time marketing directors, where they are they've hired ten agencies. They're stuck in the middle. They're like, okay, ten agencies need ten different things, and not everyone has you know three partners involved. Not everyone like is structured already or has mm-hmm. a pre-understanding of structure. A lot of them are faffing around, and what they end up happening is the uh, the business owner who has zero understanding of marketing finds himself full-time handling these ten agencies, and the business is getting ignored. Mm-hmm. That I feel just lack of structuring is where. The business doesn't thrive beyond a point. Why there's so much resentment? Why people hate their marketing agencies? And that is a fact, right? When you look at it statistically, the average shelf life or average cycle life per client per agency is around three months. So, um, to solve the gap between you know having you remain stress free, you remain you pertain to your CEO role. Let us handle the CMO services for you. We will hire either the agencies or the partners that we already have at at hand work with them to achieve your targets and the best part is it's only on achieving the targets do we get a performance fee mm-hmm. <coughs> so it's entirely a lot more based. as well yeah it's is, high risk high reward, high you risk literally, high reward yeah. if you don't achieve your targets you don't get paid so it's literally about how good are you at what you claim to do and then attacking different departments absolutely and also i think with the advent of ai and the accessibility and democratization of ai the fact that all of these you know people who are who think they can make a killing with you know, being a social media marketer or running performance, th- all of those jobs are yeah because those jobs are going to the disappear. You mm-hmm. can now get GPT four to do that. It's not going to disappear. Yeah, it's they're all not going smart to enough. AI is not I mean, going. AI is not. AI is pretty dumb. You know, for social media and stuff, you need strategy. Like I've tried with AI. I will no here. I will. I will contest you on that a little bit. <laughs> and I think the lowest Super level of what people are trying to run, like okay, mm-hmm. run me and you know yeah. an SEO yes. campaign or whatever that. Of course, you need brains to also use AI conveniently, right? Exactly. I'm saying that the lowest rung, what you were, let's say, doing before, running marketing and being on retainer, and okay, these are the 10 things I will do. All of those things can be done by one intern on an, uh, sitting on a GPT-4. Maybe not to the same extent that you could do, but it will get better. It's, Tasks it's getting, are better. Task management is it better. It's all about yeah. tasks, at yeah. least till now. Pe- yeah. People were affecting... X, Y, Z, all of exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. And there are enough and many more popping up every single day. Yeah. With the bigger models that are available, you are able to have... Right now, I, I we just recently used an SEO management tool, which is all run by AI. 
it it will push your company's SEO, SMO, all of that up to the top in 14 days or something. What's you know, that's a tool. I will tell you afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Secret. Uh, Is it secret? Uh, no, it's not secret. I just, I just, I just don't remember know. right now. I've, I've used, I think, 120 different tools this month. Oh, wow. And we are really. Month. Yeah, because we, we're building something, we're building techno billion AI, yeah. which is like a. Oh, so I wow. want to affect a billion people with AI yes, tools. Yes, yes. This yes, is what's yes, been keeping yes, me busy. Yeah. And I, so I know what's happening in the yeah. world of AI. And I know that the pace of change for AI is also happening very fast. But the way that you are working now, yeah. you're lit, what you're doing is you're making your job position unattainable by AI. Yeah, the, the position. exactly. So it's not like bottom level <laughs> stuff anymore. I don't, not, don't let my secrets out, but yeah, yeah basically not, I'm not letting... But it's true yeah. because... Because service industry is dying. Service industry has very few, um, you know, strong... Either you, you know, rise to make yourself so good that you are indispensable. And this is not more mainly in a sentimental sense. It's like AI will come, people will get fired. Yeah. You know, so understand, are you adding value? That's it. Like this was... It was not that... Rip, fine, AI won't replace me. It's a great benefit byproduct but the main purpose was how am i going to ever make this a big business if or a big service business as long as i can see it until you know i'm investing in something x y that how am i going to take this service single-handedly and make it have it be determined by value mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know rather than being dri driving driven down by price because everyone's just looking to negotiate in service industries man like it's like and I think in Calcutta, it's probably the worst. Yeah. One of the worst places to be in a service industry yeah. here. Because Even photography, videography is <coughs> a service industry. You have, you know, so every service industry right now, it can't really be automated. Not every at all, but a lot can and a lot can't be automated. Like video editing can also be automated. But yeah, are you a good can. video videographer? Like, are you going to add the You still have to have outdoors? vision. Exactly. Somebody still needs yeah, to run it, the system. Yeah. It really it's comes not, back to like, you know, what comes before chat GPT? Or like, you know, what comes before like, how do you tell a good story, you know? I mean, you can probably get five, six different prompts from ChatGPT. You can have content that fills up like Instagram from AI, and it will happen. I think in the next 10 years, it will happen. But I think people will eventually crave originality mm -hmm. or humanity, yeah. whatever that means, you know? Yeah. Maybe maybe we might, we might like the AI content for a while. It's new, we like everything new, it needs to be fresh. Mm -hmm. But then eventually, there will be some soul in the work you know the, the soul in art as well so i think there will be people who are afraid of it who are like okay my job is going away and i think the creative industry is going to face a lot of it like graphic designers and things like that you can yeah. do things very quickly but um, people who are you know confident in their what they want to say you know these are like tools that are exciting like this is now like this it's is a leveling. catalyst to yeah, this is leveling the playing cells. field with like yeah. Hollywood and Bollywood <laughs> and like the big industries that needed like ten teams. Mm -hmm. Now it's like, oh, you know what? I have a good idea. Let me go take it to the industries and be Sound like, yo, guy. I'm gonna do it myself. Exactly, and that's yeah. what is gonna set apart the next generation of change makers. Yeah. Yeah. their it's ability great. to also use AI. I, I wrote this. I wrote this article the other day about. AI sort of being a dance with the machines. Mm, and I like that. the whole idea, I should have posted this on Instagram, I forgot. Mm. Right, What's I, it I, now? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. just now. Right, no. See, Can that's you make CMO as a service. <laughs> She's yeah. pitching. She's yeah. inadvertently <laughs> pitching on the side. Phones no, up. I always yeah. make note. When I have an idea, the first thing yeah. I do is I'm like, I'll send a voice note to myself or I'll just make note. Like, yeah, yeah, no, I, that's I, I was writing for LinkedIn and that's my, my favorite social media is yeah. LinkedIn because that's where oh, I also cool. understand the more most about what people are thinking, where yeah. trends are going. And it's more about, more than trends, you know, trends are still fashionable. I yeah. want to understand what people are thinking at a grassroots level. Mm. And when I say grassroots level for my industry, it's not necessarily grassroots level, which does, it does not necessarily mean kids who are, uh, you know, going to school, going on a bicycle for 20 kilometers, like our you know parents might have said yeah. uh, stories, you know, like yeah. everyone's yeah. had these Walk stories. 20 kilometers Walk to school. 20 yeah. kilometers every, every day, day. 865 chapatis. Yeah. 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 <coughs> yeah. No, not those kind of people, but people who are, say, just entering the education world. Mm. Just, they're young students going from school to college or even mm. in school. They're, for me, LinkedIn is a great way to um, you know, speak to some of these people yeah. who are getting into the world of professional networking for the first time. Yeah. And I see that there is a huge fear of AI mm. which is happening right now. That a lot of people are intimidated by it. What people don't realize is AI is here to stay no matter what. Yeah, happens, yeah. right. Yeah. There's no. Good. There is nothing that you can do. Your about. feelings don't matter. At yeah, this point. really. Right? <laughs> exactly. So might as well learn to learn AI to make yourself better yeah. at it. Right. Yeah. Like uh, this year, I did not play holy, and I ended up building the entire stack for 
uh, techno billion ai which is this social empowerment education and entertainment tool we're building for a billion people our target is a billion people mm. now imagine it might have sounded boisterous if this was 10 years ago because there was no human way for me to actually reach out to a billion right. people absolutely today yeah. there is yeah. it's possible to scale things oh, at a higher. massive rate and adoption rates can be so much better mm. it can be so much faster right yeah. so my job role now as an educator on one side and a social reformist on the other side is how do i take ai to the least privileged people mm. how do i make sure that they also have that choice yeah. that chance of being able to disrupt themselves their industries the way that you have a choice the way yeah. that you have a choice yeah, today you have access the yeah. reason why you can use ai so effectively is you speak english you're smart you have you know some money to probably get gbd4 or even have friends who know about these things who can tell you and then there's a trickle down effect and you know what to do mm-hmm. imagine a kid in uttarakhand mm. imagine a kid in dharavi imagine a kid who is has never even gone to an english medium school does not hang out with people who are as privileged as you are they probably haven't even heard of ai yeah. so they don't know what's coming yeah. to hit them yeah. so i think if you're able to bring it to them imagine the you know there's a book by ck prallad if you've heard it, the wealth at the bottom of the pyramid no, uh, which no. is which basically says that a billion people at so there's 4 billion people let's say at the bottom of the pyramid mm. right if you put it as a pyramid mm. and then the, the people at the bottom of the pyramid they actually have a lot more to give mm. to the top or to to the society as whole than yeah. the people at the top interesting there's there's no yeah. way of actually tapping into that yet and it, this is the problem this book was written it's been it's a massively big uh, you know multi seller best seller book but it's still the truth in places like india there's so many people who do not have access yeah. yeah and access here is not even a problem of like not having enough money it's about information yeah they don't have the same kind of information sources that you and i do mm. so now the target that i have is how do i make the make ai applications i'm not teaching them about how to code ai mm. i'm saying how, use ai to make your life simpler mm. simple mm. little things that can help augment your you know little bit of uh, uh you know the amount of money you make at the end of the month or have okay i have an idea can i use ai to make it refine it make it better but it needs to be in their language they don't yeah, speak they english yeah exactly so here's where the empowerment bit comes in it has to be available it has to be multimodal it has been languages of india and eventually needs to be in dialects mm. india has thousands of dialects yeah mm. and it needs to be available to every person at the mo- so what are you thinking like an app it will there are many components to it and this is i think it'll detour it'll I mean, share how much you are comfortable sharing no it's just i think it'll take too much time but it's yeah. a it's a it's a uh, suite of solutions uh, most of them available for completely free and mostly we bring people in with entertainment because entertainment works very well and you are able to today do the same piece of content and tra- live transcribe it into a bunch of languages at the same time and right. then push it to people based on the, your understanding of these people so it's personalized messaging and getting content out to them so that's how you bring them into the fold then you do education that's the next step yeah. so how do i educate them on basic ai tools so that they get access to the knowledge that you and i have mm. without maybe knowing enough english or not having that kind of information and then the third bit is about empowerment so through entrepreneurship through you know helping uplift them in society a little bit giving them a little bit of a hope or optimism and That's not amazing. the fear is what i guess the next bit is going to be about the next few years yeah. because 2028 29 what we are looking at in the world of ai is artificial gener- general intelligence mm. which means that ai is going to be smarter mm. than all of humanity put together <laughs> it's happening and it's not an extinction level smarter event smarter or more informed They smarter and consciousness it's it still doesn't have like higher thinking process what is consciousness yeah this is going to go what is consciousness let's see what what is perspective like ai is, uh, ai doesn't have first hand perspective so but it has it's collective wisdom right it has collective it has collective information it has wisdom. collective information but you are there to you know give make it use it for informed choices Yes. Today we yes. are using narrow AI. I would not call it smarter. That was my only tip with agreed, the entire agreed. sentence. So let's have more cog. Let me break it down. It will have more cognitive ability. Yeah. 
with and with the inform collective information of entire humanity yeah. put together. Hundred times it's more informed than I am. Hundred, mm. it's like yeah, I mean probably a billion times, times because yeah, like a billion yeah. times over, or like or seven like billion seven times billion over, times over right? into lifetimes over. So we can we just go to reach a, a, a like you know I don't know what kind of a figure we're going to reach there, but. But what it's happens to the bottom more. billion? Then my point is, what happens to the bottom four billion? What bottom of the pyramid? What happens to these people? Mm. Is my problem now? Can you imagine? It's still such a privileged statement to be able to make of course, today yeah. that you know what we use ChatGPT for. Yeah, or like even making. having these philosophical discussions about AI. Yeah. Yeah. you know, which is like, oh, you know what is it ethical yeah. or not? But people don't even have it. You yeah, know? So they that's don't even know what it they, is. They don't even know what it and is. And so that's a different know? like connection and like you know a problem that you're trying to solve yeah. altogether. So we'll see. Let's move away yeah. from that. May yeah. I to fashion? Yeah. We don't have any guardrails, right? We're here no, to yeah. no, no, stick yeah. it wherever yeah. it goes. Wherever it goes. So yeah. what's fashion for you? For me, um, it's expression. Like So it's like anything that you would... Uh, it's like how you feel. I think how you feel also really predicates how you're going to dress in a day. Uh, who you are as a person. It's very unconsciously who you are as a person. Mm -hmm. I think there are a lot of people also who don't, they say that, you know, I'm not like a fashionable individual, but they'll still wear like a black t-shirt or like they'll still wear jeans. Black they're, is fashion. They're like, yeah, Steve Jobs, you know, like, you know, that's... It is. It it's, is. I, it's functionality. It. Yeah, yeah, they're very good. Yeah. There's a different relationship you have with it in different like levels. And now if you want fashion to be like a statement, a symbol, then it gets louder, then it gets mm. more expressive. And, you know, you can have fun with it. It's like, again, I, I look at it all like art. Yeah. You can create and you can choose what you want to do with it. So yeah. Yeah. No, the question was not supposed to be that simple. I'm, of yeah. course, I, I yeah. you will have opinions about what fashion. Is fashion? fashion is. What is fa <laughs> yeah. fashion? Is. Yeah. But then Putting my clothes on. <laughs> my next question is: Let's say you know you you're working with a fashion brand quite closely. Yeah. Would you ever see AI becoming a creative director of a, of a big fashion brand? It depends. Like I mean, it depends on a lot of things. Like again inevitably things are going to happen AI is going to be very quick at becoming designers becoming filmmakers becoming creative individuals but then the question is like why did we start this mm. we started this to protect the artist you know and the artist has something very special you know whether it's an artist who's making gamcha or it's an artist making handicrafts they're creating something you know so they're in their own way sole proprietors they're trying to like market themselves to the world but they can't do any of that you know based on conditions and things things like that. But, you know, they have this deep connection to culture mm -hmm. and we need to preserve it. What happens when that goes away? Uh, so, you know, do we want to completely automate it? Like, you know, automate it. Uh, it's it's, it's uh, just it's an a, opinion. I mean, of course. Yeah, I, I would say that it, de like, it really, really depends on, um, because we are doing the opposite. We're trying to go back mm -hmm. to just at least keep the art and the soul alive. And, you know, let the systems and the things that need to be run as very, like, methodical, let that still be systems. But, you know, this is what, this is why we started it. We started it because of the play. We started it because of the, you know, the humanity in it. Mm -hmm. So, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon with 145 East. But, you know, let's see. Let's see how we integrate AI. Maybe, like, 10 years from now, there might be an interesting way we integrate mm -hmm. AI. Yeah. But, uh not the like as long as the mother's there she's the hmm. chat gpt she's the, chat. She's the <laughs> mother gpt yeah. mother gpt5 so what, what are you trying to do with the brand now what's the what's the pragya brand that's coming up and the pragya brand that's coming up so let's so so fashion and break it out into fashion right fashion, so fashion is a lifestyle, big part of it? who i am yeah. like and i have kind of known this i've i've what I, you know, when you grow up, I wanted to be a fashion designer. All my sketchbooks, all my, I used to be a good artist when I was growing up. So all my sketchbooks, everything since I was, I think, three, now that I connect the dots, I've been, whatever I could sketch has been clothes or like females with clothes. So there's been a, there's been a direction to it. And slowly that evolved in my personal taste. And mm -hmm. then there comes a time where, you know, I'll go for like meetings and I'll be dressed up, like even, like I'll wear what I'm wearing, you know, which, which suits me. But at the same time, I'm, conscious and aware of the fact that I'm working in a capacity that's in marketing you know there are these times where I've kind of just hidden have to like hide fashion as a way of expression for me because I'm more confident in what I'm wearing there just so that it's not perceived as superficial or superfluous what percentage of Pragya is Calcutta? actually born and raised here like I told him I said I'm look I'm still making my mind about what I think about Calcutta so I don't want to be I know what it has given me 
I also know what you know my problems are with the city. So I am still making up my mind, which I'm allowed to do about what I think about Calcutta in terms of like a very strong opinion. Yeah. You know, because I do enjoy it. I've enjoyed it since I've come back. How long has it been? Uh, it's been a month, almost a month. Almost a month. And before that, you were in Delhi. You, know, you were in Delhi, and I really enjoyed that yeah. space. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed the past. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. Delhi is great. Okay. I know I'm a city person. You know how people are like, okay, what's your yeah, ideal life? Me too. It'll be nature or m- no. mountains. Well, nature is nice city. for for a little bit yeah. to breathe, but I think the pace of life kind of becomes a uh, uh, situation. But what about you in Calcutta? Wh- uh, what do you think of the Calcutta story and I mean, because Calcutta. it's it's on your it's on your yeah uh, it's on your chest, but yeah, it's yeah like he's gonna flex now. He's now he's yeah, <laughs> <Okay>. guys. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Calcutta is like everything for us. I think it's. But you uh, grew up in Texas. No, no, no. I grew up in Calcutta. Oh, you went to like Texas was a big part of our lives. Like dad was over there, mom was in Calcutta. Um, spent time in America. Did schooling in in India. Uh, did schooling in Calcutta. I think. Uh, I there was more and more clarity and love for the city while I was away because you know you learn a lot about the city and things when you're not in it mm-hmm. actually and like I had friends also come from like different places and then you see Calcutta through their eyes you see festivals through their eyes and it's just beautiful like yeah. Calcutta is not a city it's a it's a character it is it's such a, a, it, it's, it's so character. many characters it's I so many like characters it's and it's a different character for you like yeah. for everyone yeah. and it depends on the time of life you're in and what you're experiencing there are different people who come back to calcutta for different reasons you know and it it embodies this character in your life mm-hmm. and uh, i have this very terrifyingly beautiful confrontation when the city reveals itself in durga puja mm-hmm. you know it's so nice absolutely said. Like wow. it's a poetic. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's a poetic. Wow, the words. Wow, it's but it like it's insane. Like I saw, I s- I went to design school and we studied art and like cinema and all of these beautiful things. Not once did they talk about Durga Puja, okay? Which is the largest public the art biggest. festival in the world. In the world, Literally, and yeah. I think it's like if ridiculous. you're a human being yeah. existing, you have to Imagine. see it. You yeah. know, this is Bangladesh should be promoting this. <laughs> you know. Trying, With, I think it's yeah. phenomenal. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's absolutely phenomenal and mm. completely floored by it yeah. every time. Like yeah. to see a city transform like that is incredible. I think a project that I love to take up with 145 as the next phase of collaborations that we do. You know, Durga Puja is the world's largest public art festival, and it has a budget of approximately nine billion dollars. Oh, cool! In general, nice. Which, if you look at the Olympics comparatively. Is about eight billion dollars. Oh, and no once every wow! Four years. So they have that happens once every four years, and cal- in the contribution of uh, Durga Puja to the economy is about nine billion dollars. Wow! So, uh, and there are forty thousand Durga Pujas that happen almost mm. every year, mm. and it's happening currently in forty-five different countries. Right now, the Bengali sentiment or the Calcutta sentiment, let's say, no, no, Bengali. I mean, obviously, naturalized Bengali. But the Calcutta sentiment around Durga Puja is the strongest. It's the one unifying factor yeah. for all Calcuttans, right? Yeah. That's what brings us sort of together. Yes. It makes us the most alive. Like uh, someone should see that transformation. Someone yeah. should just come five days before Durga Puja, seven days before. We did that, you know, and this and just see the whole thing come happen and then, and then go. go away. Just you know, l- observe the, that. The, That's the a, transience it's a ride. of it all. It's so a it's a insane. Yes. The transience of you Durga are with Puja the journey, something. one with the journey. Yeah, so last like year actually, want, yeah. we got we wanted to get Durga Puja written about by a bunch of people and uh, like internationally because that's something that's deeply bothered me. Why don't more people talk about the Durga Puja internationally? Although it happens in forty five countries, but it yeah. happens in largely like Calcutta neighborhoods, the p- places where a lot of Calcuttans come together. So this is something we started with Mass Art, mm. with uh, mm. the with the British Council, with um, UNESCO because UNESCO it's the yeah. intangible cultural heritage tag as well. Yeah. So we've been trying to bring more people to come and see the Durga Puja. Mm. So we started a cultural summit last year. And we brought about in total about 220 culture makers, cultural change makers from around the world, to come and experience the Durga Puja before the Durga Puja even starts. See that madness, yeah. and then write about it in their own countries, in their own ways. Yeah. Yeah. So we started that. A lot of lot of it got written about, but of course it has to be a moment in time in culture. That's mm. not something that's happening. The way it happens during Carnival, for example, mm. the, or the way that it happens during Ma- like, like Mardi Gras. Or a Mardi yeah, Gras. Yeah. Yeah, why is it not happening? Why the is it not becoming a form yeah, is mainstream, not recognized? You know, 
experience like a cultural for the world. experience this should be cultural for the world stone. yeah so i think an interesting thing like that happens seven three, wonders three, of the three, world. three people here yeah that we have right i think there's marketing there right. is fashion and a very recognizable bengal brand and then there's you know make calculator fashion relevant again. and marketing big yeah, fashion time. marketing what he's doing is big time marketing also yeah. big time marketing right yeah. how do we take the learnings from what we do in our daily lives and use that for the durga puja story mm-hmm. something i would love to venture out i think clear actionable from this podcast and we always try to do that during Absolutely. the podcast we try to you know, any first steps and huh? many thoughts i can give a plan of action right now that okay. the marketing <laughs> if the government reads this they will be able to no, but, kind of execute that plan. but why would you have to be the government my problem in general with a lot of these things is it has to be a people's movement yeah. it needs to come from the people the reason why make calculator relevant again as a movement exists even you need the funds backing now which is why government not always you for can this, do yeah, for no it you to can be do, mainstream yeah no i'm telling you pragya we can so i as i'm in a conversation about this in terms of making a manifesto for what the movement needs to have you know go through in the next few years and one of the things we've you know by accident uh, come upon is that there exists something called the google art spaces on online google arts and museums i think they're called and you can make a repository of all the good things about a place on it mm. so we're in talks with them now if can we make something like this for calcutta where i if i have to explain to somebody outside of the country mm. what is calcutta the emotion the thing that you yeah. said the characters yeah is there can there not be a digital manifestation of that online can I which people say something i'm yes. dying to say it last year i wanted to i spoke to this guy to buy his instagram page it's called this is kolkata what is it called in this is kolkata it's okay. an instagram page oh, heard, and yeah. i spoke to him literally to buy it because mm. i looked at it also as a where sentiment and capitalism comes together mm-hmm. where it was talking about getting the blog page to monetize the blog page and speak more about kolkata and show them these unique aspects of kolkata that are not very much spoken or or um, highlighted about and the vis- the manifestation of this is a visual page just having say even if the government tomorrow decides to back a handful of kolkata p- platforms you mm-hmm. know provide them with better resources just a handful of them forget even 15 But of them let's that. fundraise for it i think yeah let's know, fundraise, let's for, fundraise it. for it let's fundraise for it just to back <laughs> these blog pages give them better of course it has to be uh, the money has to go well but wow what a good idea if if it can be fundraised the quality of production you have a script writer right here right you have cinematographer you have you. cinematographers right here the scripting of calcutta for each and every page to talk about exactly this just because you need to see something at least 20 times apparently as a stat maybe i'm wrong for you to remember it so just having it attacked consistently through all these platforms and providing them the tools and resources because this is the platform where you will reach this activate pr some more recurring communication but you know i can give a whole marketing plan like mm-hmm. i said yeah, so i am just that on yeah. camera we're yeah. going to do it off camera but this is been yeah. a lovely no, we conversation could start a fund rating we situation. we have yeah. some actionables i think mm-hmm. we have stuff that we yeah. can do yeah. together this yeah. year yeah. Uh, so it it took us a podcast to come to this point and we just uh, you know as we had said we will involve the guests in some way yeah. so there'll be an actionable at the end of this episode yeah. which is how would you see calcutta evolving into the future how do we create new idols for calcutta we keep talking about the past we talk keep talking about history yeah. the legends who've been why mm. not the new legends why what are these guys not know? legends what do you want to know about calcutta what do you what know do you... about calcutta what would you like to do about calcutta if yeah. you had all the resources in mind what would you do with your beloved city yeah. write to us we're going to float a form along with this episode i've decided that on the go Amazing. and we're going to crowdsource ideas we're going to crowdsource yeah. resources we're going to crowdsource people and together we are going to make calcutta relevant again Let's yes and we want ideas what do you want to see so that tomorrow if we do if make calcutta relevant again has is supporting or is fundraised by about 10 blog pages that just focus on calcutta as the topic what is it that you want to see so that we can then go ahead and you know put that stuff out there where you feel like the world needs to know this you know yeah. all, we all 145 east is doing that we can all do that just by the agency of having a phone and internet connection and a basic understanding of kolkata and feel free to use ai for it like this is not an exam yeah. so you can't cheat <laughs> so the, yeah. it's it's for a greater cause feel free to use every tool at your disposable right to us till then we're going to say goodbye yeah. it's been lovely yeah. having oh, wow. yeah. my co-host on the cool, on the show my coffee is so cool i'm not even finished it yeah, yeah. haven't even yeah. touched it haven't even touched it it's been great it's thank you so much lost. thanks uh, like, thanks rahul share, thanks subscribe. pragya 
Lies? No, no. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kicking her and dropping her back at my flyover. <laughs> Cut! <laughs> <laughs>